Hi there. Uh, in this video, we're going to be going through um, the doc strings and specifically how to add doc strings yourself, how they should be formatted, and um, when we can take um, inspiration from the doc strings in the array API standard, and also what changes we need to make um, when we're starting off with these doc strings as a template. Um, so without further ado, let's uh, open up a browser. Again, we're going to be basically um, just going through the contributor guide rather than um, going through a coding example. Um, so let's get the docs open and uh, deep dive and um, doc strings. Um, so the first point to make is that um, whenever the function is based on a function in the array API standard, um, we're going to start off with the doc string in the standard as our starting point. Um, so, yeah, basically, um, well, actually, the first point to make is that the doc string should only be added into the function here in IV functional IV, then the category name. And there should be no doc strings in the backend implementations at IV functional backends backend name. Um, and this is basically because each of the backend implementations are effectively different instan instantiations of the same function. Um, so there's no need to repeat the same doc string kind of four or five times. Um, so in order to explain how that should be written, we'll just take one example in this case, uh, which is IV10. Um, and yeah, as we just said, if the function exists in the standard, then we start with this corresponding doc string as an example. And um, the doc strings can be found in the array API standard GitHub project under spec API specification array API, which we can link to here. Um, in the case of tan, it is under element wise. And if we just search for def tan, we'll find it. Yeah, here we go. So this is the doc string that we take as a starting point, um, which we can then just copy over. Um, actually, be a bit careful, because when you copy like this, I think we need to open it in raw format, because from memory, when I've done it like this, it's not copying these new lines. So actually, all these new lines are removed, and we should keep them there, otherwise the formatting is wrong, because uh, there are new, the new lines are needed, which is a little bit frustrating. Maybe if we go raw, it would work. Um, that's a mistake I've made a couple of times. Um, yeah, looks like we're copying the new lines now, which I'm inferring from the fact that it turns orange here. Um, let's check actually, I want to just make double sure that I'm not talking nonsense, because this is actually quite important if we're actually using this as a reference. So yeah, we have new lines here, whereas I think when it's not raw, then we don't, um, which is a bit annoying. Sorry, should have tested this before. Yeah, so therefore what we should do, just to be sure, is um, actually we should view this in raw and then copy it from there to make sure we get the, the new lines, which is the correct formatting. Okay, so that's the first step, copy it over from the standard. Oh, just close the whole thing, sorry about that. Uh, let's get back there. Um, so, um, yeah, so we start off by copying, um, as we just shown, um, from the API. The first thing we then do is remove um, the type types from the doc string. This is because we are adding, as we explained in the previous video, we're adding very thorough type hints, um, and therefore adding the types as well in the doc strings would lead to needless duplication. And what our doc string builder pipeline does is use uh, a helpful Sphinx extension, which um, infers the types from the type hints and adds them to the doc strings and the arguments in the docs, um, doc strings directly. So again, we remove these just to avoid duplication and make sure that we um, only have one version of the types, um, which is the type hints. Um, another thing we do for many functions is add an out argument. Um, the array API standard is um, only ever intended to 
kind of mandate a subset of required behavior. Um, it's not intended to be, a, um, it's not intended to limit functionality for backends. It's kind of saying, here's what it should do as a minimum. Here's some of the arguments it should have. Um, but there's no restriction on adding behavior, which is what we're doing here by enabling in-place updates of most functions. And in fact, all functions that produce a single array um, do support the out argument. Um, so that's one thing we do. Another small change is that then by default, the return is called out, which is clearly a bit confusing. So we replace that with ret instead, short for return. Um, we then add a small section, which explains that the doc string has effectively been borrowed from the array API standards. Um, a, to make it clear that we, um, oh, this is a function. I um, often have conflated the word method and function. But anyway, so this will then say this function conforms to the standard. Um, so yeah, partly to show that we conform to the standard and partly to give credit to the authors of the doc string, which isn't actually us really. Um, and then finally, if the function is nestable, then we add um, a simple explanation for this which as explained in the previous video, um, also accounts, well, kind of makes up for the fact that we are not adding container to each of the type hints. And also that generally the discussion and the explanation of the function assumes an array, which technically speaking is not necessarily the case. Kind of input array whose elements, technically speaking for a nestable function, this could be a container of arrays, which then applies the function at the leaves. So um, we don't bother trying to account for all of this in the doc strings or the type hints. We just add a quick note saying, hey, this is also um, nestable, so we can also pass containers in. Um, yeah. So with all these changes, then we get the new doc string, which is very similar to before. This is pretty much unmodified. We add the out argument, we remove the uh, types, we change this to ret, we add this to say it's come from the standard, we add this to say that it's nestable, and then we're pretty much done as far as this goes. The next video then explains how to add doc string examples. So um, just to be clear, this isn't the end of the doc string entirely, but this is the end of the doc string explanation apart from the examples, which we cover separately because they're quite involved and warrant their own dedicated explanation. Um, as a final point, um, if the function that you're writing a doc string for is not in the array API standard, which actually is, is many of them, um, I'm not actually sure exactly, but probably um, functions in the standard make up around half of all the functions in Ivy, and um, then basically you just need to use the, um, the doc strings for the functions in the standard as inspiration. Um, basically, we want the format to look the same, we want the explanations to be in keeping with the tone and style of these doc strings. Special cases should also be mentioned. The formatting should also be following numpy doc, numpy doc formatting. Um, we should also add this message for nestable. We should not add the mention that it is an array API standard function, of course, because it isn't. Um, but otherwise, you just need to use your best judgment to make the overview explanation as clear and consistently styled as possible. The parameter descriptions to again be as clear and consistently styled as possible, etc. So yeah, just a bit of your best judgment here to uh, add doc strings for the functions. Um, okay, so that's everything for this video, a little bit shorter than the last one. Um, in the next video, then we'll be going through a bit more, which will probably be a longer video, where we'll be explaining how to add doc string examples, which are very thorough, cover all of the different instantiations of the function as instance methods and with nestable properties and with native arrays and IV arrays and everything, um, just to make sure that anybody who happens to stumble across the doc string for a function very quickly gets a sense for what's possible um, using IV. Um, okay, so that's everything for this video. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.